Welcome everyone to this 101st meeting of professional speakers. I am Rupinder and I will initiate the proceedings of the meeting for today. And before I do that, I would like to recite the Toastmasters Club mission statement. We provide a supportive and positive learning experience in which members are empowered to develop their communication and leadership skills, resulting in greater self-confidence and personal growth. After that rather quick round of applause, I will now move on to a quote that I read about day before yesterday. And it stemmed from the fact that uh, we're trying to do automation in a large way. So we've kind of automated the general evaluation sheet, the grammarian sheet, the timer sheet, and the R counter sheet. I felt that maybe we are going too far so this quote probably might help that not everything that counts should be counted and not everything that can be counted counts on that note i would like to welcome our dignitaries and our guests to start with i recognize the presence of Nagaraja Rao, distinguished Toastmaster, past international director. Let's have a huge round of applause for him. I also recognize the presence of our grammarian all the way from Switzerland, Margarita Broadbeck Roth. Let's clap for her. And we have a host of guests. We have Subhashri Sahu. Uh, we have Megha Paul. We have Sumit Bansal from Turning Point Toastmasters. We have Priha Bansal, who has joined us from somewhere in the Northeast. I fail to recall exactly where. My apologies. We have Sajal Jain, who has joined us from Delhi One Toastmasters. And we have Amit Saxena. Welcome, everyone. Now, to begin with, the feature um, one of the key features of Professional Speakers Club, where everybody gets to present their short term goals. I will just uh, fire up the presentations and uh, it is not updated yet. So what I will do is that I have the short term goals for some of the speakers uh, who, who wished, uh, who said that their short term goals will be different. I will read those out as well. But to start with, let's uh, go over to Aditya Gupta. Aditya's short term goal is to shoot a quality video slash written content, 90 posts in the nine, uh, next 90 days. Aditya, where are you? And uh, let us know your progress. Sure. Thank you so much, DTM Rupinder. Good evening, everybody. This is Aditya. From the past couple of days, around four or five days back, I was a little behind my progress. Thanks to the call with distinguished Toastmaster Mukesh and distinguished Toastmaster Devina. They, we had a small call around three days back and, and their insights were very helpful in getting me back on track with my short-term goal. So far, the progress that I have been making is going on good and very soon I will be back on track. Thank you so much. With that, I hand it over back to you, DTM Rupinda. Thank you, Aditya. And I believe I've not shared my screen. Have I done that? No. How sweet of me. Uh, I'm afraid and not. Also, Pindu, it would be great if you can make one of us the co-host so that we can pin the right video of yours. Right. We'll do that because I'm trying to find where I am in the scheme of things as far as my Zoom meeting goes. There. I am. Right. I'll just share my screen with you. Right. So let's move on to our next professional speaker, and that is Ankur. Ankur. Hello, everyone. I am Ankur Shrimali, and my goal to join professional speaker was to become a polished speaker. For this uh, short-term goal, which I have kept for this month, was to give, deliver four speeches by July 31st. I have given three speeches already, and I have two speech slots also at various clubs. So I'm looking forward to complete 
with them and focusing specifically on storytelling and vocal variety and i would be uh, changing my goals from next month and make it a bit more challenging and learning for me over to you thank you thank you ankur and let us know if any help is needed from our side moving on to anshupriya thank you rupinder uh, my short term goal is to improve my listening skills by uh, 50% by the end of the year and uh, i am uh, progressing in it thank you okay thank you anshupriya moving on anuset i'm not sure if she is present in this meeting right now so i'll move on bhuvan is also not there i think he's attending a tli devina as it stands right now is to understand better into what goes into professional speeches and i'll be doing that by delivering analysis of professional speeches delivered on three different platforms in three 18 minute speeches by december 2020 my progress so far is six on eight go eight steps that i had designed to complete this goal okay may you move on to the seventh one very soon honey i believe is not here um just a roll call honey if you are there she is not i move on mukesh thakur your uh, short term goal is improving pronunciation and enunciation by getting 9.5 on 10 by three mentors on a customized ballot for the month of august for every role play where are you on this hello everyone i am mukesh thakur and i am working on the vocal variety and uh, currently i am working on the, the pronunciation as well as enunciation and for this i have been working on a daily basis in this week i have uh, read around 70 pages loudly and i have written around 7000 words thank you thank you mukesh and uh, best of luck with accomplishing your short term goal moving on to raj mehta distinguished toastmaster sir if you could read out your uh, if you could read out your short term goal Raj Mehta, are you there? He isn't there, Rupinder. Okay, moving on to Roli Sena very quickly. So, Roli, you updated your uh, short-term goal, and it is to reduce crutch words and filler sounds to less than four in eighteen-minute speeches. Have zero grammatical errors. Use at least four new or uncommon words in eighteen-minute speeches, and at least one uncommon word slash phrase in seven-minute speeches, and zero defect. for time limits lot of goals so roli where are we on that thank you so much just a distinguished host master rupinder singh the goals are numerous but i'll be basically using the r counters grammarians and timers reports to understand where i am i have been tracking these so far my speeches outside the clubs have been meeting these goals they have not been meeting these goals within professional speakers club i hope to improve on that thank you very much uh, roli so i will now move on to our next speaker and uh, that happens to be this gentleman by the name of rupinder singh dtm he has to learn to smile naturally by september 26 2020 and he does that by practicing smiling for 30 minutes every day and he tries to incorporate smile into speaking opportunities which he just got reminded of uh, because he realized that he was in, in a speaking opportunity so he can't his quest for that uh, that elusive smile continues let's move on sandeep sandeep are you there hello am i audible yes now you are audible uh, sorry Hello everyone myself Sandeep Kumar I have two smart goals for this year one is to upgrade my coaching skills by using the effective coaching path by end of this year and second is uh, to improve on my grammar and pronunciation skills by end of this year the update is I have written two speeches and for grammar and pronunciation I have read uh, 10 pages from the book atomic habits Great job, Sandeep. Keep working on those goals. 
let's move on shiv priya gauri you are supposed to write nine articles by december 31 2020 how many articles are you at right now thank you distinguished toastmaster rupender singh the objective is to improve my writing skills so far i have written 3 out of 9 uh, the, my progress currently is at 33% and i'm looking forward to completing one article by this week uh, so that i can move forward and complete four by four out of 9 thank you back to you great job devina oh, sorry shifria and that completes our round uh, for the short term goals uh, short term goals and now i will invite our toast master of the day who will take the proceedings forward our toast master of the day is works with a government organization and uh, he has a rather unique approach to toast masters which you can sample in his speeches in his short term goals and in his speech topics particularly the meeting themes that he picked up and today seems to be no different presenting to you our toast master of the day ankur shrimali are you netflix are you netflix ankur shrimali thank you so much distinguished toast master rupinder singh and good evening everyone toast masters and my dear friends are you netflix let me ask you a question how many of you begin or end your day with this any recall to something new which you have been watching recently very scarily new thing okay you might call me outdated i'm And watching uh, the defenders these days i'm watching friends Oh great! I love friends. And uh, recently, uh, on number one trending shows, one of the number one trend trending shows was Dark, which I have watched. So instead of spending hours and hours of our lives uh, in binge watching, we can spend it by relaxing with our friends, reading a book, playing online games, talking to our best friends, or even going out for shopping. But what we do instead? we stay at home and netflix and chill now reed hastings ceo of netflix understands our behavioral change that has happened over years uh, in consuming the online content in one of the interviews he said we are not competing with hbo amazon or tv we are competing against your sleep imagine a new show comes up and you want to finish it off to show to your friends that you are updated and you are pretty cool you what you do you give up on your sleep you just watch that show by binge watching it people like me are so much hooked to our screens episodes after episodes we wait for a new series or our favorite show get recommendations from our friends Uh, on a, some new awesome series, or just look for that new movie previewed on Netflix. In fact, in fact, Netflix has helped us in connecting to our true friends who would readily share their usernames and passwords to us. Maybe Oxford should relaunch the phrase "sharing is caring" due to this. But Netflix has not only changed our online digital consumption; it has also changed the way we speak. Earlier. stream used to mean flow of a liquid now it means flow of data at high speed at your convenience earlier seasons used to be just four winter summer autumn or spring now we have seasons depending on the budget and popularity of the shows netflix and chill used to mean hanging out with friends and watching something online now it is a euphemism for hooking up and recently a new term has emerged it's binge racing it is a virtual race to finish off all the good shows within 24 hours of its release so that you look cool and smart in front of your peers i'm sure the way things are moving soon our conversation among our friends would be something like this hey 
you should totally binge this new show they put on that sounds great but i don't know when i'll get around it i'm pretty netflix at it uh, as it is i don't don't care how netflix you are make this one a priority even if it netflix is you further and the day is not far when the word of the day at professional speakers would be netflix which in fact means the point when one realizes that they have no idea when they would caught up catch up on their instant streaming queues of tv shows and movies netflix has indeed changed the way we are today the way we interact behave and consume things around us but the biggest change that i have and i want to see and i hope it would happen one day would be when our professional speakers meetings are binge watched on netflix and i am sure it would look something like this people would be binge watching our uh meetings full night and i am sure that they would be racing binge racing to complete the meetings the day it completes so let's hope all for that day and begin our today's meeting let me first stop my sharing screen since professional speakers club follows a unique format unlike other clubs so let me explain to you the meeting structure our meetings have five important segments the first segment is a professional speech where a member delivers his or her professional speech in precisely 18 minutes our second segment consists of a prepared speech section where our members deliver their speeches as per toastmaster international education in the third segment of the meeting table topic master conducts the impromptu speech section where speakers are asked to speak on topic given by the table topic master for 1 to 2 minutes in our fourth segment we invite an established speaker who gives us an insight into the professional speaking with his or her power drop and the fifth segment is the evaluation segment where general evaluator evaluates the entire meeting with the help of supplementary role players so please help me acknowledge the role players for today's meeting with a huge round of applause our general evaluator for today's meeting is distinguished toastmaster shiv priya gauri let's have a big round of applause for her our timer for today's meeting is distinguished toastmaster rupinder singh i would request all the speakers to pin his video before speaking he would be showing physical cards and i would request rupinder to just yeah so this is how rupinder singh would be displaying cards i would request each one of you to pin the screen so that you are aware of your timings i'm sorry to interrupt but please pin the one where you're seeing the green card right now please pin that video the one that ends in a with my name i'm Thank sorry you. uh distinguished toastmaster rupinder but we are not able to see a different screen which has a green card uh so i am logged in from two accounts one of them ends in a that is the one you're supposed to pin all right our our counter for today's meeting is toastmaster sandeep kumar and our grammarian of today's meeting all the way from switzerland is toastmaster margarita i would request our grammarian to introduce the word of the day for us Good afternoon. Good evening. Thank you very much for the warm introduction. Um, whilst I do not suggest um, that we are using slang or urban English, given the theme of today, I have chosen a word of today that has not yet found its way into the Oxford or Cambridge dictionaries of the English language, not even into a Merriam-Webster. given the fact also that the verbs to google to debug or to text are now firm fixtures in all the tree we may as well practice the use of our two words of the day before they will officially be part of the pantheon of the correct use of the english language the first word is net flexing it is a verb 
And it is when someone does not have Netflix and you flex on them that you have it. To flex meaning to bother someone that you have more of something or that you are better. For example, nobody really cares about Games of Thrones. Stop Netflixing about it. The second word is Netflixing. Also a verb, which means watching the same movie simultaneously on Netflix at different locations with commentary via texting when the parties involved are unable to meet. For example, we are still in lockdown. I cannot come to your place to watch The Irishman. Do you want to Netflix? Enjoy and please use the two words of the day as much as possible. I will copy their meaning and the details into the chat. Thank you. Thank you so much, Toastmaster Margarita. I have been recently Netflixing dark series so that I can do Netflixing with my friends of how much I know about time travel. So let's begin the meeting with our first segment, the professional speech segment. Our professional speaker today is distinguished Toastmaster Devina Chaturvedi. Over the last five years as Toastmaster, Devina has been known to challenge herself to deliver different types of speeches. Her favorite speeches are those where she presents a breakdown of different aspects of public speaking in simple and memorable terms. A budding speaker and storyteller, before she made the error of prioritizing her education over all else, she served as a leader in District 41 at the club, division and district level. Her motto in life is to find method in madness and she is most inspired by the words we must accept finite disappointment but never lose infinite hope by Martin Luther King. Let's give a huge round of applause to our professional speaker for today, uh, distinguished Toastmaster Devina Chaturvedi. Uh, before I call you on stage, can just I confirm your audio please once? Devina? Uh, hi, Ankur. Am I audible? Uh, yes, you are audible. So, distinguished Toastmaster Devina Chaturvedi, from your dreams to your screen, from your dreams to your screen, distinguished Toastmaster Devina Chaturvedi. Over to you. Hey, good evening, everybody. Hope you're all doing well today. I want to begin this talk with a small activity. What I want you to do is just imagine that you're creating a slide. As of right now, you're working on a speech and you want to create a presentation to go with it. You're creating a slide. Close your eyes and imagine it. So can you see all the colors that you've used, all the fonts that you're using? all the images that you've put in it, right? Everything is looking so gorgeous. And it's the slide of your dreams. That's how you want your slide to look. Open your eyes. Is it something like this? If I were to make it for this presentation with all the colors that there could be? Yeah. And then just think about it. If you start making it and then it ends up being something like, What is it? This is not what I started out to make, but this is what ends up being on the screen. I don't know about you, but I have been extremely frustrated with something like this that has happened to me over and over again. For about five years, this was my reality. Every presentation that I would make, it would look so pretty in my head, but on the screen, it would just be black and white load of text, maybe some images. So what I want to walk you through today is some tips, tricks, and some things that have helped me make my presentations not like this, but like this. And to do that, what's on the agenda today are some basic elements. I will be talking 
beginning from the purpose of the speech, which determines what the content on your presentation will be, the structure of your presentation will be, and what is the size and the layout that you should use. Then I'll go over some basics about fonts, colors, spacing, and alignment, followed by some tricks that I've learned over the course of these years. What is not going to be on the agenda today are some things that you've probably heard a zillion times, which is the 10, 20, 30 rule. 10 slides, no more than 20 minutes, and no less than a 30 point font. Points, not paras. When you're talking, uh, when you're talking about putting text on your screen, try to limit the text to just keywords instead of writing the whole thing that you're going to say out loud in any case. And to avoid clutter, which is where a lot of people say use white space or leave some blank space and don't just fill your slide with everything that you've got. Let's begin. When it comes to what is on your presentation, the only determined there, determiner there is the purpose of your speech. Whatever you put on, this, uh, on your screen has to have a purpose to it. The first element there is your uh, content. So depending on what is the content of your speech, say for example, for a presentation like this, where I'm using um, something that's a professional speech where I'm trying to explain to you the different elements, I will go with a simple structure in the sense that uh, my content is solely focusing on one topic. So I'll keep one basic theme and I'll run with it. The second element there is your structure. So again, the structure of the slides will be the same as the structure of your speech. And that is how you should do it. So the first step is to get your speech on paper or on your screen and have this speech set instead of first making the presentation and then writing what you're going to say. So that's how I do it and it's worked wonderfully for me. The third element there is the size and the layout. So for example, if you're making a presentation, you're going to present it on a laptop. I would go with a 16 by nine ratio. If I were to uh, deliver it as a handout, I would go for an A4 horizontal, like a portrait style mode instead of a uh, layout style. So there are a lot of things that you can do with presentations. If only you are sure what is the purpose that that presentation is going to meet. Coming on to some of the basic elements that are there for your presentation, which are fonts, colors, spacing, and alignment. The standard rule, when you're using fonts, try to limit your fonts to no more than four. On this slide, there are already three. If I added one more, it would be just enough. And if I added another one, it would be taking things too, uh, too far and would just look like clutter without any organization, without any sense of purpose as to why different fonts have been used. Next comes colors. As you start out, make sure that you decide on your color palette depending on the purpose. So I feel, and this is something I've also read about, that blue is something that goes well in a professional setting, which is why you'll see this presentation, uh, the primary color here is blue. More about colors, there are two things that you need to keep in mind. First is what is the purpose that the color meets, whether it's a uh, it's a funky presentation that you're doing. Say you are doing a Bollywood quiz. You will use different colors. You will do a variety of colors. Or if it's a professional uh, presentation where you use fewer colors. Perhaps you are making a presentation which is a brochure which has to go out. Which is where you will be using a lot of images as opposed to uh, relying on colors in the background color and the text and everything. Then comes combinations. So you obviously will not be making a presentation which is just full of one color. Even on this slide, you'll see there are two shades of blue already. Three if you look closely. What is the purpose behind using such, so many shades? And it's just that colors add meaning. So this entire palette is designed to give you a professional look. The primary color here is blue. And you'll see shades of it all along. Primary color means when you go back and you think about this presentation, the color that will come to your mind is blue. Then there are secondary colors or accent colors, which here in this case is yellow. And how do you arrive at these colors? I have a simple trip, which I'll just show you in a while. But before that, let me just talk about spacing and alignment. 
as you can see on this particular slide itself there is enough space for all uh, elements to coexist if i may call it that and everything all the text is left aligned if you're going with the center aligned it just makes sense that your ev that everything in your entire presentation is center aligned if you're going with the right alignment everything in your presentation should be right aligned it's just something you have to commit to it just gives it a better look that's about it that's the only thing that i have to say about spacing and alignment this is also something that allows you to have enough white space in your presentation that points that are trying to make do actually get across now on to the little trick about colors and how to find out which colors to use in your presentation the simple website called color.adobe.com that is something that i rely on heavily when you log on to this website you will see a lot of options you will first see a color wheel and on the left you will see a plethora of options in terms of the kinds of colors you want what i have used in this particular presentation are combination of shades and combination of complementary colors when i went to shades i found my blue shades all i wanted to use i found my primary shade and then i saw the entire palette then i moved on to complementary colors and i found my accent color which is yellow from there does that make sense so far all right coming on to the final bit that i have for you today and which is the trick which is where all the magic happens i honestly believe if there is something that you can say why an image or an illustration or a chart you should do it there's no point in saying something via text if there's an image or an illustration that it, that can do that trick to you you would have seen if you've seen my presentations earlier i rely rarely on text and most of what i use is just images even if i'm using text i try and make sure that the text serves as an image for example by using text boxes which is my second trick rarely it has happened that i've put text all the text that i have in one text box even on this particular slide you'll see i've used 1 2 3 4 5 five different text boxes for five different pieces of text that i have put in what does that help me with a it helps me with making sure that i have enough space between the text b it helps me to style all the text differently you will see on the left it's all sans serif fonts on the right it's serif fonts if you know about them you will understand sans and serif serif is just the uh, the line at the end of the letters if you see on the right side of your screen you'll find them on the left you you won't find it so that just helps me make my slides prettier if i just uh, organize all my text into different text boxes as opposed to putting all of it in one even if it's the same idea going forward that also helps me with animating text if i need to differently i haven't done it for this particular presentation because i wanted everything to be there with you at one go since i was facing some technical errors in the morning however it is something that i've used previously where through text boxes i was able to animate text differently now coming on to animations actually you can use simple animations in the sense that you can use animated illustrations in your presentations or you can animate your slides this is something that roli actually asked me to talk about and let me share my experience with animations I usually try and avoid using too many of them especially within the slide. I will use transitions that is something I'll definitely do but I try and avoid animating text and images within the slide unless I'm using them to emphasize a point and I know exactly where I'm going to use them and that is something I do with an on click mode. What happens with animations is that it just adds an unnecessary amount of anxiety for you. it adds an unnecessary variable whether it will work or not whether the person who's viewing your slide will have an internet bandwidth good enough for them to be able to view your animation whether or not your internet connection will help you use that animation or it'll just not work that particular day sometimes when you're offline you also have to keep in mind whether the animations that you're using on your 
on in your presentation if you're using them on a different device whether that device's software will be compatible or not these are just too many variables that i like to avoid at all costs this is why i steer clear of them when i'm using them for text within a particular slide however often it will be the case where you will have to use animations to make a certain point say for example you have too many ideas for one particular slide you will want to keep all of them in one slide however in that particular case to make sure that the that the point that you're trying to make at the time gets the emphasis it will be important for you to use animations in which case my recommendation would also be to use a swipe out animation so make sure once your text pops up and your work is done that text goes away before the next text shows up you can do this with multiple slides or you can do it within the slide using animations coming on to some things that i would like to talk to you about in general and why i say that if you can think it you can have it on your screen if you know anything about computers and design you will know this that everything here that you see on your screen is made of pixels so if you can see it if you can make it if you can see it you can make it you just have to have that belief and you have to have patience and perseverance this is something i've experienced i'm not just saying it just for the sake of it you've seen how my slides used to look before and how they look now the trick is just to believe that if you're able to imagine something to spend enough time on it you will have it on your screen just remember a couple of things see exactly what you're doing from one corner to the other if you're using a box in your head make sure you visualize it and you put it on the screen as well if you're using a circle make sure you put it on the screen as well every tool every element is there at your disposal all you need to do is be confident in your ability and just make sure you persevere through that point in time when you say this is the best i can do because there is something better that you can do right after that particular point the other thing that's helped me a lot is to seek help i don't know everything right now as well what i'll do after this is if rupender ever shares the recording of this with me i'll go back to my mentor the person who taught me everything about design that i know today and i'll ask them what more do you think i could have talked about what more do you think i could have done to improve my slides today and then i'll take it from there and when you see me the next time presenting something it'll be a step further i have 5 minutes to spare for you so i'll open the floor to any questions that you have Hi, Devina. Yes, Devina, I have. I see you. Please go ahead with the question and ask after you. Okay. Uh, so, Devina, what I wanted to ask you you was you, you talked about transition of the slides. Uh, however, I saw that you did not use, I think, any transitions in your slides, right? If I'm correct. okay uh can you explain a bit more on how to use it more effectively and where should we use it and where we should not thank you ankur so with transitions i have a rule that if i have slides that follow the same layout and are sharing the same idea say for example when i went from uh, when i went from content like purpose to elements to tricks i use the same transition simply because those slides are the same layout and they are making the same point they are the body of my speech today so to say so i use the same transition which was just a simple fade in fade out nothing fancy okay. which is why probably you didn't notice it and if you didn't notice it and if you if you did not notice it because you didn't see it that just means there was some lag which means because i used it there it did not make much difference 
if i were going from one idea to another say going from colors to showing you adobe slide there i used a different transition that just makes the flow in my head seem like okay there's one story going this is something on the side coming back to the same story that that's how i visualize it that's how i use my transitions thank you so much shifria uh, distinguished to smarsa devina i have one question how long is too long when it comes to using a video in your presentation thank you to distinguished toastmaster shiftia i will speak for myself my attention span when it comes to videos is 3 minutes at the max when i'm using it in a speech i try and avoid it as far as possible because i'd like to be able to say those things as opposed to have somebody else say those things for me however if you're showing a video with a purpose say for example you are evaluating a speech and you want people to be able to see that particular speech before you start evaluating it that's a whole other ball game i would still limit it to 3 minutes 5 minutes at the max no more than that in a 20 minute presentation i'm assuming so say uh, that makes it no more than 25% of your speaking time great thank you All right if i have no more questions i'll end my talk here and i'll reel my rest of the time for the session for all of you to get more learning out of the session back to you distinguished toastmaster oh back to you toastmaster ankush shimali not yet thank you so much uh, distinguished toastmaster devina it was really informative and i would surely get back to you offline to learn a bit more on the Uh, custom animations and other tricks so i would request now all the audience members to take one minute to note down their feedback for the professional speaker i would request each one of you to provide their specific commendations and recommendations which would be later on in the general evaluation section we would be using them so timer kindly show a red card after one minute thank you so much timer uh, so let's move on to our prepared speech section now our first speaker is distinguished toastmaster mukesh thakur he comes from a community who is lazy in speaking chartered accountants he is practicing chartered accountant and believes that no one should be lazy in communication and thus he is here as a passionate toastmaster he is also an author of the book guide to financial instruments published by taxman he enjoys watching movies traveling to new places and playing chess he is also adventurous and keeps challenging himself by coming to the stage among other daring adventures a toastmaster for 5 years he is on his way to become a good reader writer and speaker distinguished toastmaster mukesh thakur is delivering his level 3 project 2 from the pathways visionary communication and the project title is understanding vocal variety the purpose of this project is for the member to practice using vocal variety to enhance his speech so let's welcome with a huge round of applause to our first speaker distinguished toastmaster mukesh thakur mukesh thakur can you just confirm your audio one am i audible yes yes you are audible and you are also visible can you tell me am i audible still 
Yes, you are clear. Thank you very much. Okay. Distinguished Toastmaster Mukesh Thakur, Chasing Tomorrow. Chasing Tomorrow, Distinguished Toastmaster Mukesh Thakur. Over to you. If you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crowd. I was listening to this motivational speaker sharing the Martin Luther King's quote. After listening to this speech, I was too motivated to go forward. However, perplexed, there was an obvious question in my mind. Everything is fine, but where do we have to go? Good evening, professional speaker and guests. I know this is a silly joke, but what if I tell you that the renowned author Yuval Noah Harari has written a mind blowing book on the same question to ask from the entire humanity. We have come long far. Since the evolution of humanity, we have come from 145 billion years ago. We have evolved from the ape and uh, now we have reached to the moons and uh, to the Mars and now we are aiming, aiming to the stars. After 50 years, we are not sure what will happen to the science and the technology. But as per one of the interpretation out of the book and out of the growth of human history, it is certain that after 300 years, the human species will no longer be the most powerful species of the entire world. Let's recap. Over the 70,000 years of known human history, we have come a far long from the invention of the fire to, to reaching to the moons and rocket sciences. We have overcome many challenges, challenges to the humanity. We have won, won our pandemics and diseases and starvation and poverty and famine. Now, into 2020, more people are dying from obesity rather than dying from the starvation. Obesity uh, is killing more people than starvation, famine, and terrorists all, all combined together. Now, as we have evolved so much, what is our next step? The next step of human being is to become God. Because as per the claim made by the author, we don't, die, uh, we don't die because our soul leaves our body. We die, or rather there is no proof that there is soul in our body itself. We die because there is basically a technical glitch in our body. We die when our body parts starts, stops working. We die naturally when we grow older and uh, our body parts start getting weaker and weaker and one day it stops working. Now, suppose if we grow together, our science is more developed, and if are able to replace our body parts, and if, if we keep changing our body parts, at every moment it, it stops working, then there can be one day when the entire body parts are changed. Now my question to you is, if there is no soul, and the, every, body, every part of your body is changed, how you are going to identify yourself as you. Now, we have been evolving from the animal to the most powerful species of the world and now going to be, become God over the next century. 
my only concern is are we growing a structured because over the past few years the way we are growing is we are totally going towards the dataism our new realism is dataism our day to day decisions our most of the actions in our lives are not based on what we feel our actions are based on what have been imposed on to us we we are no more and doing our own things everything is determined by high level intelligent robots for example google facebook and lots of many other algorithms now have you ever seen a movie a science fiction where at the climax of the movie the robot is feeling consciousness or the robot is falling in love with the heroine of the movie however there is a difference between the consciousness and intelligence consciousness is feeling of human we decide our actions based on our feelings or our, or our emotions which is the chemical reaction of our body at the other hand intelligence is a high level calculation by robots that is called intelligence conscious intelligence can never replace consciousness however intelligence can be better than consciousness so my question to you is if what is more valuable consciousness or the intelligence and the next most important question to you is does it matter now we are moving towards the growth where we are waiting for internet of all things to happen once that happens the human species is going to extinct just like when we invented gunpowder for the first time did we ever think that the world will be sitting on the edge of atom bombs at one day in the face of chasing tomorrow we are flying we are running we are walking and we are crawling but i have the question from each one of you the same silly question jana kithe hai over to you toast master abdul thank you so much distinguished toast master mukesh thakur very intriguing speech and i was also thinking whether consciousness or intelligence which one is more important so thank you for your speech i would request all the audience members to take one minute to provide feedback to our speaker please provide your commendations and recommendations thank you so much distinguished toastmaster rupender our next speaker is toastmaster roli sinha roli is a technical writer by profession and a language fanatic by passion roli loves technology and getting into technicalities she aspires to be a scintillating speaker one day toastmaster roli is delivering her level 3 project 2 connecting 
with storytelling from the pathways innovative planning the purpose of this project is for the member to practice using a story within a speech or give a speech that has a story so let's welcome with a huge round of applause our second speaker for today toast master rupina and before go on stage i would request holi to kindly unmute yourself and check for the audio am i audible ankur yes you are audible and can you also confirm if you are able to see the timers uh, uh, screen yes i pinned it thank you thank you so much those master roli sina the fault in the star fault in the star those master roli sina over to you the front row of a movie theater is an interesting predicament for a girl her neck i had sat down like a queen on a throne but now my neck was cramping up trying to stare at my favorite stars on the screen i didn't want to look up anymore i didn't want to look anymore i wanted to be on the screen next to that actress i wanted to be that actress as i splayed out my hand on those countless colorless pixels which if you don't look too closely look like reality my hand went in and i walked in and i was in the movie my favorite actress Ma'am, I'm such a huge fan. She looked up, as if she hadn't heard me at all, and then she looked down at her watch. I'm late. I must rush. And then she put on her hat, on her coat, and ran through that door. I followed, and the door slammed behind me. And then I watched her disappear into that oddly shaped doorway. I tried to get in but I couldn't. I was too fat. I'd always been thin. Maybe I'll try to reach up. I'd always been tall. I'll go back. Where's the door? Where the door go? What am I going to do? a table with cake that says eat me and a glass that says drink me the i'll drink my hips are becoming bigger but my waist is becoming smaller mhm mm maybe now Mm, mm, mm. Oh. I eat. I am taller. Maybe now. I'm too tall. I drank and I ate and I drank and I ate and I tried and I tried but I couldn't get in. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Someone could drown in those tears. Huh? Who? How? Doesn't matter. What are you crying about anyway? I can't fit in. I eat and I drank. I'm not the right shape. <laughs> Have you tried? not eating oh good luck i didn't eat or drink for ages it seemed i felt dizzy was the doorway coming closer could i go 
in. I was in. Now, where did you come from? I followed that actress through the doorway. Mm -hmm. There are three kinds of people in the world. One who fit in, two who don't, and three who are born to those who fit in. You fit in, you are special. Now, which path do you want to take? Um, the left one. Not right. The left one will make your dreams come true. It will make you a star. I went down that path and I sang and I danced and I acted. I was deliriously happy. Mm-hmm. Just this far, you better meet the queen. Well, would you like to show us what you got? Yes. Lights, camera, action. I sang and I danced and I acted and I was deliriously happy. Ooh, off with that head. You can't do anything right. How can you say that? Everybody's saying it. She's so tall. She's so thin. She can't even act. How did she get in? Ah, oh, sugar daddy. Make those voices stop. I didn't know. The voices wouldn't stop. I don't want to be here. You dreamt about being here. I wanted to be an actress. You wanted to be a star. What's wrong with that? The fault is in the star, always. What do I do? Take that. I looked up at the fan. I looked down in my hands and everything went black. Mr. Toastmaster of the day. Wow, amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much Toastmaster for the delightful story for in the star. I was totally hooked with the speech and I hope our audience also liked it. Please take one minute to provide your feedback to the speaker and provide your commendations as well as recommendations for her. Thank you so much, distinguished Toastmaster Upinder. Let's move on to another exciting segment of our meeting, which is Table Topic segment. And to conduct this segment, we have our Table Topics Master for today, Toastmaster Anshu Priya Prasad. Anshu Priya Prasad is a journalist currently working as a senior producer with India TV. She started her journey with Toastmasters in February 2018. From then on, she has learned and grown 
and has continuously and tremendously improved herself. Let's welcome with a huge round of applause our table topic master for today, Toastmaster Anshu Priya Prasad. Thank you. Over to you, Anshu Priya. Thank you, Ankur. Table topics are like a mini speech with an opening, a body, and a conclusion. Table topics enables a speaker to quickly organize and express their thoughts. And the best part is that guests can also participate in this. Each speaker is required to speak for one to two minutes. Participants will be disqualified if they speak less than one minute or exceed two minutes, 30 seconds. I would request everyone to please use word of the day. And today there is a twist in, in the off the cuff speeches. There will be one topic and you have to speak for and against the motion. Say uh, for the first one minute, you will speak for the motion. And for the next one minute, you will speak against the motion. So who is going to volunteer first? I would request all the guests to participate. Okay. So, uh, so Sajil, uh, can I request, can I give you first topic? Uh, hi, Toastmaster and Shubriya, yes. Okay, so your topic is Netflixing is better than just a sec. I I am not. I think I am not sharing my screen. Let me share my screen. Okay, your topic is Netflixing is better than sleeping. Sleeping is better than Netflixing. So first, I have to speak for the motion, right? Yes. Thank you so much. Uh, Netflixing is better than sleeping. Since the lockdown has happened, I have been uh, having a lot of troubles uh, sleeping. So for me, the biggest source to uh, like to spend time instead of sleeping is Netflixing. And like Toastmaster Ankur said, I am also binge watching Dark these days. And it's not more of a show; it's more of a, a course that you have to take because there are so many characters and you have to. Uh, uh, see the family tree every time you are watching that show so uh, netflixing and you learn like you get into a show and you binge watch a show so you are into a whole another reality it's like you are um, in a different reality but the problem is that when you stop that show uh, it's difficult to come back to your original reality so uh, i think it's better than sleeping because uh, you uh, learn about many characters you see many different stories and uh, you uh, it's it can be any genre you can it makes you laugh it makes you like sometimes if you're watching a horror show or a crime thriller then uh, it can uh, be good uh, coming to against the motion uh, uh, sleeping is better than netflixing because it uh, helps you concentrate more on uh, the more important things in life uh, sometimes I feel that watching too many shows can actually uh, make you very, uh, I don't know, it can make you very lethargic and uh, it reduces your concentration on many other things that you have to do. So uh, you, your reality actually turns into a show and then you're not able to concentrate on your life. Uh, that's it. Oh, my. Well, that Thank you. Really a good try. Th thank you. Now who is going to volunteer? Do I have any volunteer or should I call the name? Uh, I would like to speak. Okay. Hi. Sub Subhashri, uh, your topic yes, is? Yes, Subhashri. Your topic is real hero is better than real hero. Uh, sorry, real hero is better than real hero. Real hero is better than real hero. Uh, for and against. For and against, yes. Okay. Uh, real heroes are the uh, real heroes are the one uh, who portray the uh, portray the real heroes on screen. So they they kind of serve a better role 
in terms of real warriors because we do not go act like the fight uh, the people fighting at the borders the uh, real, uh, the people who are doing their part we don't uh, see them uh, see them or get to know about them but these real heroes portray them so uh, we get to know what they are doing there and appreciate their work they spread the awareness what they are doing for our country or for everyone present there so they are better than them because they kind of associate uh, uh, the real uh, the general audience with the real heroes so they play a better uh, the the real heroes play a very defining role for the real heroes also as for as all as also for the public and in uh, second way i think i would say that real hero is better than the real heroes because they are doing the real heroic job there so they uh, uh, they are actually <laughs> they are actually sacrificing and uh, putting their lives at stake for the betterment of the uh, of the country or the fellow men so not not only the people who are fighting at the borders but the uh, real life heroes like uh, someone who has done something for you are your heroes and they have done something to change your life so definitely they have done the real work they have made your lives better so they are the real heroes real, uh, real heroes just portray them so they are better very good thank you subhashri now can i have next volunteer please okay uh, paru can i give you something yeah sure okay so your uh, topic is filmy romance is possible in real life versus filmy romance isn't possible in real life <laughs> okay uh okay yes filmy romance is possible in real life because uh, i am a married woman so i can say this thing <laughs> and uh, i would say filmy romance is not more of filmy like uh, uh, you whatever you see on screen you can have it in real life as well so uh, for me uh, filmy romance is not uh, that much filmy so uh, like uh, uh, you can have it in your real life as well um and the other part was uh, filmy romance is uh, look uh, you cannot uh, have it in your real life so um, i'm sorry i'm <laughs> what would i say on this topic <laughs> um, okay over to you okay thank you parul <laughs> nice try so uh, i would like to take one more topic is there any volunteer um hi i'm priya uh, this is priha i would like to volunteer for the topic okay thank you thank you uh, yeah. your topic is sorry uh, just a sec i like watching science fiction versus science fiction is the waste of time okay so first i'll go for the um, for part i like watching science fiction so um i think a lot of people talk today about dark which essentially revolves around time travel or uh, i should i say about batman or about captain america and how they end up saving the world so if in this current pandemic situation i believe i was in a science fiction story i would imagine myself being saved by maybe uh, the entire world being saved by captain america as he comes and saves all of us all that we find dear to us and uh, it actually gives a break from the reality you know it has a world of its own and all those science fiction story actually make you believe you know what what can be the next uh, invention or the innovation is it actually even possible 
and it may not be possible at all but again it just gives you a glimpse of what can be the future and now coming to the second part science fiction is a waste of time uh on the other part if i see there are a lot of shows uh, which actually hook on reality like uh, we have a lot of uh, we have marie curie coming up which is not a science fiction it is actually a science thing so it actually gives you a lot of knowledge it gives you uh, it tells you about the history what went into making science as we actually see instead of portraying science as it actually couldn't be uh, so yeah i feel science fic is a waste of time i'm personally not a science fic fan and i prefer not to watch it so yeah that's all i'll rest thank, thank you thank you priya it was such a wonderful time now over to you ankur that's it from me thank you so much anshu priya that was a wonderful segment now Now it's time for the most awaited segment of today's meeting, the power talk section. I hope I am audible. Can someone confirm? Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, Devina. Today we have distinguished Toastmaster <coughs> R. Nagaraj Rao, who has innumerable accolades to his name. He is an electronics engineer who began his career in coffee industry in 1988. A certified coffee taster, he has played a vital role in the growth of Ganesh Food Products Limited. His company has emerged as one of the top coffee roasting companies in India. The list of clients includes Costa Coffee, Dunkin' Donuts, Krispy Kreme, McDonald's, Coca-Cola, and many others. They have won. all the best roaster award four times in a row he is presently working as the executive director managing its resources and strategic <coughs> plan he is also a member of toastmasters international since 2002 he was the district governor of district 82 india and sri lanka and in 2010 11 the region advisor for region 13 comprising of toastmasters clubs in india sri lanka china japan taiwan and korea in 2013 and 14 and an international director in 2015 17 his awards and recognitions include excellence in education award and etiquette excellence in leadership award palm desert president's distinguished direct district award number 1 in the world las vegas arya recognition award kuala lumpur ID recognition award Vancouver and the first district governor from India to receive the presidential citation at the Hall of Fame of Toastmaster International in Orlando in 2012 we have such a big personality with us today who is going to talk on a very great and interesting topic audience and timer please note that out of the 10 minutes allocated to him The last three minutes are dedicated for the Q and A session. So I request each one of you to keep it interactive. Now, please help me welcome distinguished Toastmaster Nagraj Rao with all the applause. Distinguished Toastmaster Nagraj Rao, wise and otherwise, wise and otherwise, distinguished Toastmaster Nagraj Rao. Over to you, sir. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Ankur. Thanks for that uh, nice introduction. you know when i get such an introduction i feel i'm really old especially in front of all the young and enthusiastic members in your club uh, it 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 takes me back uh, years and years during my toast master journey but anyway thanks thanks for that nice introduction i'm happy to be speaking to you so when rupinder called me i asked him what do you want me to speak about and he said sir you have such a vast experience just share your wisdom you know that that got me thinking So, what does this word "wisdom" stand for? What comes to your mind when you hear this word? Perhaps you are getting images of uh, wise old men sitting around a fire. Maybe you are thinking of professors who have written dozens of books. Perhaps you are imagining a hermit meditating cross-legged, cross-legged on a mountain top. 
you know, wisdom as such is not such a rare or exotic quality as you might be thinking. I believe that wisdom is a practical ability. And I believe it's a measure of the skill with which we navigate life. We all have it in different proportions, of course. So look at this. All difficulties are easier to avoid than to solve, correct? So in a way, wisdom can be defined as prevention. Yes, I know life can be hard. Sometimes problems rain down on all sides and you can't change that. I accept it. But if you know where danger lurks, you can ward it off. You can evade all sorts of obstacles. I remember Einstein saying this, you know, he put it this way, a clever person solves a problem, a wise person avoids it. What he means is that a preemptive approach can solve the problem before it occurs. But there is an irony here. The irony is avoidance is not attractive. Imagine two movie plots, okay, A and B. In movie A, a ship runs into an iceberg, the ship sinks, the noble captain selflessly, heart-wrenchingly rescues all the passengers from drowning. And like movie plots go, he's the last person to leave the ship. He clambers onto a lifeboat just before the ship disappears into ocean depths. Let's consider movie B, the captain steers the ship around the iceberg, keeping a safe distance. Now, which movie would you pay to watch? Yeah, of course, that's more interesting. Now, but which situation would you prefer as an actual passenger on the ship? And that's obvious too, you would like to be in B. So let's say the examples are real, okay? So what would happen next? Captain A would be invited into talk shows. He would get a six-figure book contract. He would hang up his captain's hat. He would start earning a living as a motivational speaker like most of us want to do. He would be in great demand at events and meetings for major corporations. His hometown would name a street after him. And who knows, his children would perhaps for the first time in their life feel something like pride in their father. So Captain B, on the other hand, would keep avoiding dangers until the day he retires. So let me ask you, who is the better captain, better professional here? Captain B, of course. Who is the one we celebrate? Captain A. And why? Because the outside world cannot see the success achieved through prevention. You simply cannot see those failures which you have carefully avoided. Now, please think about your own life. I'm sure at least half of your successes are preventive in nature. Yes, agreed. You make mistakes occasionally as we all do, but more often than not, you avoid making stupid mistakes. Just think about all the dangers you have steered around using the wisdom of foresight in terms of your health, career, finances, relationships, a lot, right? You know, nowadays it's become fashionable to look at caution with contempt. So call me old fashioned, but somehow I don't agree with this modern attitude. I come across a lot of videos on YouTube, the so-called motivational speakers screaming at you, just do it, take the plunge, go for it. Actually, it makes me cringe. I don't think being cautious is bad. And let me give you an example. I was reading this book called The Most Important Thing. It's written by an American hedge fund manager. His name is Howard Marks. And in that book, there's this beautiful story about a gambler. One day, this gambler heard about a race with only one horse in it. And he thought to himself, hey, what can go wrong here, okay? So he bet all his money on that horse. And do you know what happened? Halfway around the track, the horse jumped over the fence and ran away. And of course, he lost all his money. 
I see this happening every day. People don't realize the importance of forethought. Actually, they underestimate this power of imagination. Prevention requires more than just knowledge. It requires imagination. And by imagination, I don't mean just sitting in the balcony, sipping a glass of wine and let your mind wander. You know, this is just fantasy. So what I mean here is forcing yourself to think of all the possibilities and all the consequences, thinking until the last detail is thought out and thought through. Yes, this kind of imagination is hard work, but believe me, it pays huge dividends. Wisdom has two components, heightened awareness of present reality and two, focused imagination of future possibility. And most of us have been doing this unconsciously. So friends, I invite you to start doing this consciously, deliberately. Be more aware of what is happening around you. Be more aware of what is happening inside you. And think about all the future consequences of your actions. And then when you act after that, your actions will be wise. And you know, who knows? One day, your grandchildren will look at you in awe and say, Grandpa, you are so wise. The floor is open for questions now. What, uh, hi, sir, this is What is the best way to perhaps understand a calculated risk or understand and take a calculated risk? Because there are two sides of a coin. Number okay. one, under scenario, you take a risk you wouldn't be able to perhaps unleash the hidden potential which is there. Mm -hmm. At the same time, when you, if, it, if the stakes are too high, then there's a risk of you losing everything. So what is your uh, feeling or what does your wisdom say when it comes to taking a calculated risk? Okay, risk, risk taking is the second step. So what I have men talked today is the first step. You know, if you are looking at risk taking, you have already come to the stage where you are uh, weighing different possibilities, you are already thinking about the consequences and you have the required information to make an informed choice. So you have already won half the battle. So what I'm talking about is just blindly jumping into conclusion without even thinking about it. You know, a lot of people don't have this imagination. Probably what comes naturally to you is not very common. You know, there are a lot of people who don't have this. They don't even come to this stage where they are gathering information, weighing possibilities and uh, doing this risk and reward analysis and then taking a decision. So if you are in that stage, congratulations. You are already, you are already on your way to become a wise person. Thank yes. you for your response. Yes, for one last question. Thank you. Yeah, Nagaraja and Mukesh. Yes, Mukesh. So, uh, my question is uh, towards the other aspects of uh, what you have already said. So, mm -hmm. as I have also been experiencing the, the courage and the risk that I have taken in life, and uh, as I have found that uh, there are no calculated risks. So, whatever mm -hmm. you see, whatever, whatever you can imagine, something will happen that you have not uh, even imagine and that's how i can feel it that there are lots of innovations and startups that are working so what are your views on this okay let me give you an analogy have you uh, observed a uh, mountain climber you know uh, he he has a safety harness and he is using two hands and two legs right so at any given point of time he is holding on with one hand and two legs and he's trying to get a foothold with the other hand. Now he strikes and if it is strong enough to hold his weight, then he shifts his weight to another leg, right? So slowly he climbs step by step. So this is what I mean by calculated risk. You are hanging on by three of your support systems and the one which is free is actually 
testing the waters or testing the ground. So this is how we move in life or in business. So there is a safety net which holds you so that you don't fall down. But at the same time, one fourth of your resources are used to test new waters and you are taking risks. So did I make myself clear? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Distinguished Toastmaster Nagarajan Rao. It was a delight listening to you on such an important topic. And thank you so much for de delivering the talk in our club. Thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure. So let's have a huge round of applause once again for our Power Talk speaker. Thank you. Thank you, sir. It's now time to move on to the most important segment of a Toastmaster meeting. It's time for the evaluation section. And to help us with this, we have our general evaluator for today's meeting, distinguished Toastmaster Shiv Priya Gauri. Distinguished Toastmaster Shiv Priya is a talent and change consultant by profession and a Toastmaster by passion. She loves to travel and explore the world. So let's welcome with a huge round of applause, distinguished Toastmaster Shiv Priya Gauri as our general evaluator for today's meeting. Over to you, Shubhriya. Thank you so much, Toastmaster of the Day. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening, Toastmasters. It's indeed a pleasure to be the general evaluator for today's session. Uh, the evaluation section is divided into three parts. The first part would be a roundtable evaluation for the professional speaker of the day and the two prepared speakers. Uh, the few guide I would request you to kindly follow a few guidelines. Please ensure that if you're called for evaluation, keep your evaluation uh, crisp and do not share more than one or two recommendations. In case of your recommendations have already been covered by someone else, please do not repeat them. And let's try not to give a laundry of the list, but let's try to focus on how a speaker can develop on different aspects of the speech. Second uh, part of the evaluation are the reports by the TAC team, the timer, our counter, and grammarian. And it goes in the reverse order where the grammarian speaks first, then the our counter, and then the timer. And the third part of the evaluation would be my uh, observations of today's meeting, which would be by the general evaluator. Without further ado, I would request the professional speaker of the day to kindly take on the virtual stage and seek feedback from the audience who are present in the room. Thank you, Madam General Evaluator. Everyone, I invite you on everything apart from the unintended pauses that I made because of my mini freak out due to the glitch. And also, please share if you found anything new or you got anything new from my presentation. I would like to begin with feedback from Distinguished Toastmaster Rupinder Singh. I would like to pass as of now because I was too busy minding the timing cards and there was a terrorist in my room, a little terrorist. May I then hear from Distinguished Toastmaster Mukesh Thakur? Yeah, thank you very much, Devina. So I have a uh, lot of uh, recommendations for your uh, professional speech, and uh, the highlights of uh, the speech were though you were uh, giving us a training or module, yet your speech was a motivational speech. You were used to the power of visualization, motivation, and uh, the next thing is going off the screen and coming back from uh, on the screen. That was very good. Uh, attractive to me that you are so much concerned when to stop and when to come on the screen. Otherwise, uh, the vocal variety, uh, your body language, the flow, and the language is uh, perfect. Coming to the recommendations, uh, there are two disconnected from, yeah, and it is, uh, it may be my fault. First is, uh, uh, I was thinking the topic is something different and that is something related to VTPR, making posters or uh, something related to design and, uh, and it is also not coming from the from your topic. Second thing is uh, as uh, for the content, uh, there are a, a few things that was new including the shapes of uh, the color. Otherwise, uh, most of the things I was aware about making a presentation. Thank you, Distinguished Toastmaster Mukesh. May I hear from Distinguished Toastmaster Nagarajara? Yes, thank you. So it's an informative speech and I really like the way in which you passed on the information. Very, very good content. And the only place where you can improve is uh, 
uh, you know, we follow this TTT concept where uh, you tell them what you're going to tell them, tell them and tell them what you have told them. You know, before you start, you, you can just say, okay, guys, here are the five things which uh, you need to make great presentations. And then you give them the information. And then finally you close. Okay, all of you are very excited to uh, create you know, fantastic presentations. So I would like to recap. These are the five things you have to do. So, you know, that's a nice way to wrap up your uh, beautiful presentation. So that will add a lot of impact uh, to your speech. That's from my side. Thank you. Thank you. May I hear one last set of recommendations from Postmaster Rory Sinha? My apologies for forgetting that I would be asked. But <clears throat> the uh, recommendation from uh, Distinguished Postmaster Nagaraj, I agree with that. The retention would have been better. I found that sometimes the hand gestures were a little distracting. Sometimes they were on point, but sometimes they were just too much for me. And uh, there were too many uses of however, um, especially one slide, the animation slide. So it was actually, I, I wasn't able to wrap my head around it. What am I supposed to infer? But overall, I loved the way you presented the content. I wouldn't do it. I love that part the most. I would do this. I wouldn't do that. And then let us make the choice. Thank you. May I now hear from Postmaster Rupinder for whatever time I have left? I have to unmute yours, uh, myself. I know that. Thank you. Uh, Devina, I heard you uh, talk about 10, 20, 30, and that's where I started uh, paying attention. But I took a couple of lessons. One that uh, is going to stick the most with me is that color.adobe.com thing. That is one thing that I've been struggling with very much. And thank you so very much for sharing those nuggets of information. And that's it from myself. All right, so I will use a remainder of my time to summarize and if you could just nod if you agree. Uh, one thing that you would all have liked more is if I shared more resources like colors.adobe that I use. If I limited my gestures to just meaningful them and not show my nervousness around. And you would have liked me to uh, be more detailed oriented in terms of what is required as opposed to uh, just what I shared about how Devina, are you there? I think she went into statue. I think she, uh, we lost her. Okay. So, uh, since we have already completed five minutes for Toastmasters Devina, so I would request the second speaker mm -hmm. to come on stage. Devina, if you're there, thank you. Yeah. May I would connect back to Devina once she comes back online. Maybe now move okay. to the first prepared speaker for the day, Distinguished Toastmaster Mukesh Thakur. May I request you to kindly take the virtual stage and begin your exercise of seeking feedback. Thank you very much, Chamele uh, Balita, Shipya. So I will start uh, my recommendation from Margareta. Can you share your views? Okay, thank, thank you very much um, for calling me to the stage. First of all, I liked very much in your speech that it was very well constructed and you guided us wonderfully through uh, the point that you wanted to make um, and you did it in at times in an unconventional way. It was not the typical sandwich with the introduction, the main part and the closure. I really loved that. There is one thing that I would like to give you as a uh, word of advice or a suggestion. Try to work with somebody that will be very ruthless in helping you to improve your pronunciation. Because 
your pronunciation is failing you, which is a big, big shame. You have a lot to say, but I noticed in myself that at times I was lingering on a word that you were using just because I did not 100% understand what you said or I misunderstood you. And I would really focus on it because I think that just by doing that, you would take a huge leap in advance. So thank you very much for calling me. Thank you very much, uh, Margareta. Now can I uh, hear quickly from Nagarajan? Uh, thank you. Uh, actually, I apologize. I was uh, I did not understand the objective of the speech. Uh, I thought it was understanding vocal variety, and I was looking for uh, demonstrations of vocal variety, but that did not happen. Uh, but as a speech, it was. Uh, it was very deep and it was an abstract, abstract uh, concept and you are trying to convey that uh, through your speech, which I liked. But uh, I'm, I'm really not very sure whether um, the nuances of voice modulation came through. Back to you, Thank sir. you very much. Thank you very much. Can I hear from Devina? MD, I want to commend you because I saw an improvement in dic diction, pronunciation, as well as inflection and some points. It, it shows that the reading that you're doing constantly is working for you. The bit that I would uh, recommend you to improve vocal variety is work more on your facial expressions than anything. What happens often is your expressions drive your voice. So say when I'm opening my eyes, my voice is automatically getting stretched and that, that variation is coming in itself. So try working more on your facial expression. It should help you with voice modulation further. Thank you very much. Can I hear from uh, Shukriya? Hi, Mukesh. The first thing which I noticed today in your speech is the choice of words. And that's one of the reasons why I think the diction has also been improved. I think a lot of words which you have chosen today are very, very comfortable. That's one. And number two, when it comes to your facial expression, somewhere I see a lot of seriousness. So the focus is more in terms of delivering the speech rather than you experience the speech itself. So if you can focus a lot more and be a little more, just be present while you're presenting the speech so that we are able to connect with you on a more emotional level rather than just from a listening level. Thank you very much, Shukriya. Can I hear from Ankur? Yeah, uh, Mukesh sir, what I saw today was that you had made efforts for specifically uh, using your voice. Uh, in some places I saw that I observed that you paced it a bit fast so that it comes uh, quickly and then somewhere you also try to make it slow. Uh, even it, so there can be improvements in that part but what I uh, would like to recommend you is that I saw some part of nervousness uh, overshadowing this uh, the vocal variety. So I think this might be because you might be attempting it for the first time or because of lack of time for preparation, something like that. But maybe in the next speeches, you can even try it better uh, in your voice or modulation and other aspects. Thank you very much. I have green cards. So I would ask all the members to share your feedback in the group. group. I am asking our guests, can I hear from uh, Sajal? Um, hi, Mukesh sir. Uh, I loved the speech. I liked how you started and ended it with the same quote. So it kind of connected the whole speech. Uh, I don't have any recommendations for you right now. Thank you very much. I am getting lots of time. Thank you very much. Is Priha? Priha, are you there? Uh, yeah. Hi, uh, team Mukesh. Um, yeah, I really like your speech and as pointed out by one of the previous evaluators, it was very deep. Uh, yeah, so your speech title objective was actually understanding vocal variety and you even stressed in your writing short term objectives regarding vocal variety. So uh, even I was looking forward to some uh, demonstration in vocal variety. But uh, nevertheless, when you delivered your speech, uh, one thing I noticed was you did maintain uh, the, you know, uh, the high point and the low point and the uh, expression in the speech that you gave. 
so that did add add uh, add to the speech clarity. That's all. Thank I you have. very much. Thank you very much, everyone, for your wonderful feedback. I will be trying to uh, becoming better in my next speech. Over to you, General Vijayendra. Thank you very much, distinguished Toastmaster Mukesh Thakur. May I now request the third speaker for the day, or the second prepared speaker, Toastmaster Rudi Sanha, to kindly take the virtual stage. Thank you, Madam General Evaluator. <clears throat> distinguished Toastmaster Nagra Rao, may I have your feedback, please? Uh, it's a great speech. I really enjoyed uh, listening to your speech, and the characters were very, very well developed. Excellent voice modulation. You are actually feeling those characters and you are enacting it very, very nice. Uh, only suggestion for uh, taking the speech to next level, you could work on the climax. Uh, no, generally, uh, there's a conflict in a story and the conflict gets resolved during the climax, which, which is kind of a release of tension, which has been built up over the journey of your uh, uh, speech. So that came too abruptly, actually, in the last sentence. So it, it was a sudden shock. So you probably you could lead up to that where um, that character is um, experiencing kind of agony or uh, depression or whatever. And finally, what happens, what goes on in her mind to take that extreme step. So that could have been the climax. Other than that, um, a, a class attempt. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Toastmaster Margarita, would you like to share your feedback? Um, what a wonderful speech. It could have been actually a stage act. And I felt very much at times as if I'm in a theater. And I do also think that this was your intention. I have not really looked into what the purpose of your speech was because I just wanted to enjoy what you have done. I really, really loved that. There is um, one thing that I would suggest you to focus upon and I would review if there is one, uh, a recording of your speech. There is one issue with online meetings and this has to do with vocal variety. And we have spoken now so much about vocal um, variety with the previous speaker. When we are elevating the voice a lot and we are changing the pitch and we are online, it very often turns into a slight whistle. And this can be disturbing, which is a shame because I'm 100% sure that if I had seen you physically, I would have loved every minute of it. So again, my suggestion would be try once to give this speech and just focus on, the, on an audio recording as to how does it come over recorded in order to do slight adjustments as to how you are using pitch in your voice. It's not necessarily with how loud you are, but it's more the, the pitches that you are using and how you can adjust it to an online presence. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, may I request Shifriya to share her feedback? Thank you so much, Rooney. I loved your speech because your speech had a lot of animation. I loved the way that you build in a lot of characterization. And with your facial expressions, you also share that what the characters were feeling at that time. Those were beautifully done. When it comes to vocal variety, though it has been an amazing uh, effort, I just have one recommendation. I felt that you were conscious when you were changing the pitch and pace, and that's actually not your national speaking style. And since I know you or I have seen you speaking for a very long time, somewhere I felt that it was all conscious. And you were focusing more on what pitch should I use or how should I change my pace and I could see that subtle stress in your face when you're doing it perhaps you could maybe practice a couple of more times so that it comes naturally rather than appearing it to be a conscious act that's my recommendation thank you thank you distinguished Toastmaster Rupinder would you like to share your feedback thank you Roli 
first of all wonderful facial expressions like margarita said stage act looked like that where i felt that uh, you can improve is perhaps varying the pace of your speech so that pace it remained consistent throughout so probably where you were trying to get into that where you were trying to jump into that probably could that could have gone a little bit faster and then varying the pace also i felt that the speech title the fault in the star probably could have been used used more than uh, the two times that you used it in your speech because then that would bring it out but this is the speech title because it's a pivotal moment of the speech thank you thank you so um, i think overall people liked the attempt but uh, the climax came, seemed to come a little abruptly and most of the feedback is on the vocal variety first try to consciously modulate it and validate it for online meetings second to vary the pace of the speech and third to make it seem more natural and by rehearsing it and practicing it more uh, i also need to focus on how to uh, refrain on the um, how to make the speech title come as a refrain so i will work on these points and thank you so much the rest of you if you could share your recommendations offline it would be really helpful thank you thank you so much to master rodi uh thank you so much evaluators i think we all have tried to apply our uh, capability of netflixing into our evaluation section so now we move to the second uh, section of evaluation where we request the, the tag team to share their reports i would now request the grammarian for the day to master margarita to kindly share her grammarian report followed by uh, we will have the rest of the role plays follow her report toastmaster margarita please take on the virtual stage thank you very much first of all i would like to speak about the use of the word of the day with the exception of our wonderful toastmaster who in response to me sharing the word of the day has used it extensively unfortunately it was a bit of a failure and this has maybe to do with the fact that choosing the word of the day in accordance with the theme was not necessarily a good idea especially if the speeches were not necessarily about netflix let me now go to the grammar um, report um, first of all, I would like, I, and I'm going just through a couple of things that I have observed. Um, some of them might have to do with the fact that due to either pronunciation or the quality of the network, I did not fully hear what you have, say, say, uh, have been saying. My progress is 33%. It should say my progress stands at 33% or is at 33%. We spend hours in binge watching. It is we spend hours with binge watching. Then a sentence such as you watch a show by binge watching. Think about when you are using a sentence you should not, in the same sentence, use, be using twice the same word. Use a little bit more variety. For instance, you can say, you follow a show by binge watching. It just sounds as richer language. Then, you should totally binge this show. Correct wording is binging on something which means binging on this show. This is how you want the slide to look. Um, always follow the something is looking by a like, so the slide to look like. 
depend of and depend on has two different meanings. Uh, the, in, in the context of as I heard it today, it was always depending on. To depend of means to be a descendant of a person or something of the like. Just think about it when you use this particular term. I wanted to look. Also, the look is always, you, you don't just say it freestyle, I wanted to look. You are looking at something. Otherwise, you would use the verb uh, watch. Um, neck, the neck is cramping up or cramping up. Um, cramp is a noun. There is no such things as a verb stating um, that you have a cramp. You have to rephrase completely the sentence. Then one point, if you go into a topic that is very specific as typography, it's important to use the typographical terms. So for instance, text is left or right aligned or centered or justified. Text is never center aligned. Um, a serif is not just a small line at the bottom of a letter, but it is a stroke that is attached to the end of a larger stroke. Just pay attention to this. And having said this, I see that I have to slowly close. I would have a couple more, but in any case, I hope the feedback was valuable. And thank you very much for having me. Thank you so much, Toastmaster Margarita. Now we would request the our counter for the day, Toastmaster Sandeep, to kindly share his our counter report. Hello everyone, hope my screen is visible. So today we have 33 arms in the meeting and if I say the filler words, which counts to 38. And out of 38, the maximum filler word is used is so. The good thing is we don't have uh, long pauses and stammer, although we have seven repetitions. So let me come to speaker, individual speaker. I would like to con congratulate Toastmaster Rolisina and Toastmaster Margarita for having flawless communication throughout their roles. A big round of applause for both of them. Now starting from the uh, presentation officer, Binder Singh. He had five, total five, including arms, filler words, and repetitions. I would like the I like Devina Chaturvedi. She had eight arms. So my recommendation is to having the control on pace. Although she's a good speaker, I think she's having a rush. Maybe because of that, uh, she's using arms and the filler words. Next is Toastmaster Sajal, Toastmaster Shubha Shri. The same recommendations that I think they the pace was too fast and because of that arms were there. The solution is take appropriate pauses rather it would help in controlling the pace. Now coming to Toastmaster Parul and Priya, although their pace was in control but having the arms four of each my recommendation is develop the habit of reading and speaking. It will help to reduce the arms and the filler words. That's, that is from my side. I will share my report on chat on the group. Over to general evaluator. Thank you so much Toastmaster Sandeep for presenting the Accountist Report. May I now request the time for the day to kindly present the report. Distinguished Toastmaster Rupendra Singh, the stage is all yours. And please unmute yourself before you speak. Thank you for the timely reminder. I'm probably I'm the worst uh, person when it comes to 
showing timing cards and I still haven't come to terms with showing timing cards on, on, in an online meeting. And I apologize if at times you were seeing the fan in the ceiling and sometimes you were not seeing anything at all. And sometimes in other videos you were seeing a little terrorist, you know, uh, running about. But uh, I hope my report more than makes up for it. So here what you see is the timing graph. The blue line represents how it should have actually gone. The gray line represents how it actually went. So every time it goes above, that means that we deviated. Of course, we went over time. And as you can see, there have been many instances that we have gone over the specified, uh, specified amount of time. We're still, still running a little bit late. Now, if I compare the stop versus actual stop when we were supposed to stop, the blue line again is the is where we should have stopped but the trend again continues particularly somewhere around this time where we were off by as much as three seconds so uh, and if you look at the combined times we will see that there is a marked difference between the uh, actual start and stop times and the actual uh, the start and stop times and the actual start and stop time we did fairly well on transition. This is what our, our transition graph looks like. If I go back, we had a total time of four minutes, 33 seconds. Uh, overall, um, but if you look here, if you look here on this side, a lot of reds. Uh, and this red means you're still okay, you were within the time limit. But if you look at the background that is red, you will see that we are going over time. And there were a lot of people that uh, went over time today. So uh, actually we chose extremes. We were either below time or we straight away went uh, over time or we straight away straight into the red zone. Apart from a couple of people, the president was able to ma maintain himself in green and uh, the our counter report was in green. Uh, the professional speech was ended up in yellow. I thought that we could have ended much earlier in the green itself but i think so those some of those questions they took uh, time i will share this report with you as a pdf thank you so very much back to you madam general evaluator thank you so much uh, mr timer uh, we surely know that you have an inclination towards using mathematical calculations in your report so and now we have the evidence for the same now I, as the general evaluator, would be sharing my report with all of you. Before I begin, there is there are different parameters under which a general evaluator evaluates a PS meeting report. I would be first showing the chart, and then we'd be seeing where are some of the uh, some of the areas of improvement as role players of a specific meeting. First and foremost, I'm happy to say that the meeting started on time and we are so far doing well in terms of time. Secondly, I could also see that most of us have scored beyond the score of two. Two is average and three is the highest score you could get. One is somewhere which is an area of concern and most of you have scored either two or more than two. So that is great. Now let's quickly see that what are some of the areas of uh, improvement we could see in uh, in terms of different roles. First and foremost, I felt that uh, when it comes to the presiding officer, the meeting room could have been set up properly. When I meant meeting room in a virtual scenario, uh, the CEO used two different devices and since it was not filled properly, because of that only the fan was either visible or something else was visible or there was no video while the president was opening the meeting and we would also always love to see the face of somebody who's on the uh, who's speaking so that was something which was missed i felt like a couple of uh, guests were missed while introducing and i felt uh, since the ppt was not shared for the first speaker I think the context setting was also missed for the business segment. Otherwise, the presiding officer seated the club mission. The person show, uh, PU also showed uh, energy and enthusiasm. And the TMOD was also introduced in a very energetic manner. Coming to the TMOD, the two areas where I felt there is an area of development are number one, the speakers while introducing the objectives of the speeches were not 
mention because of that a lot of what i could see is that the effect the rippling effect was in the evaluation section where uh, some of the audience were not exactly sure of what they need to evaluate on so i would request them to kindly ensure that the objectives of the specific speeches are shared along with in case if there are special request of maybe evaluating vocal variety or body language that can also be added along with these objectives number 2 uh, the audience were since the objectives were missing and somewhere i felt that one minute could have not been utilized to the full effect coming to the table topic master i like that the table topic section were explained i like that the it was appropriate to guess and toast masters guess were invited to participate there was a lot of solicitation which i could see and the preference was also given to those people who did not have a chance to speak and timings were followed some were the overshot the timing but still i am going ahead with timings were followed because you checked with the table to or with the timer whether to go forward or not my only recommendation to the table topic master is that perhaps challenge a little more for example there is some of the topics which for like is versus isn't or with the science fiction versus it's not some of them were personal choices if i had to respond maybe i like them but i also have a preference for something else so if it would be great if you can have an easy topic which also allows you to speak a lot of content for like two and a half minutes that would be great otherwise i really love the way you display the slides so that it's easy for the other person to know the topic uh coming to the next part the table topic speakers now my major request to each and every speaker is that please ensure that while you're speaking you turn on your camera it is very difficult for us to understand the body language the conviction and also it's difficult for me to know whether you're actually speaking to us or looking at wikipedia or something if you turn off your camera i understand like sometimes due to bandwidth we all uh, choose to turn off our cameras during the meeting but when you're speaking please turn them on without that we would not be able to assess your body language or your facial expressions somewhere i felt that each and every speaker had a great point of view and amazing evidences to back up what they are uh, thinking or their point of views but somewhere in the end we tend to uh, digress it or we tend to miss out on the objective of the speech itself so i would request you to maybe work on your conclusion and work on summing up the entire points in your speech so that you could have an effective presentation at the end uh, i would al i also would like to say that vocal variety was displayed wherever it could be given that it was a table topic and the language used was quite appropriate yes there were some gr grammatical uh, mistakes here and there but definitely the grammarian had already pointed out and showed us how we could improve coming to the power talk speaker the topic was definitely related to uh, leadership or personal effectiveness and i wouldn't specifically put a communication but still i gave it as a three because i personally took a lot of takeaways and even as speakers when especially when it comes to table topic it's very important for us to be wise in terms of what we need to speak and what we not to speak for example if i need to speak something to an audience whom i do not know often my uh, internal um, animal my animal inside would like me to take a risk and it's important for me to be wise so that i do not make a fool out of myself so somewhere the learnings can also be implemented in communication hence i would love to give it three the timing was respected and also i think at the last question the timer also shared whether we had time or not the key lessons were definitely shared in a tdt format and some the audience definitely had a key takeaway especially i did i had a key takeaway so nobody said that this risk taking is not something which needs to be discouraged at the end of the day we all have to be informed and we all have to learn so that we could take the calculated risk thank you coming to the evaluations i think all the evaluators did a fabulous job there was no repetition the tone was encouraging i also felt that the speaker was able to write down the point of actions or actionable uh, for them to take it forward uh, identify the course of next action i felt that the our counter and grammarian were also present they also presented the uh, report in a very effective manner and there were a lot of key takeaways from their respective inferences uh, coming to the timer a uh, great report i think there was a lot of mathematics which was used and i need to start learning mathematics especially graphs and statistics my only request to you is that 
I understand that there were a lot of timing cards which were there and maybe one of the root cause of the issue is that you were also acting as a tech master in the beginning and the presiding officer. In such a case, I would request you to hand over the tech master much before the meeting so that you do not have to get boggled into multiple things so, and you can just focus on one uh, piece of uh, activity. The tech master was not defined and that is very important. Your uncle Rupender and I, we always sharing the rules and regulations of uh, rules and responsibilities of a tech master. And because of that, the presiding officer was not on spotlight at the beginning of the meeting and we could take it forward the next time. Somewhere I felt the props again, uh, I didn't, I felt that it was not arranged because people who came to the meeting did not have the video on, including myself. I've been struggling to get a right place of uh, background and I couldn't get that. So this could be definitely improved and chat room was somewhere busy and since I was a co-host, I was aware of it. We can of course reduce it to the minimum. So overall, this is my uh, feedback in terms of or my observation in terms of gender evaluation. I'm sorry to that I, I think I have crossed my time limit a long time back. So now I would request the presiding officer, distinguished Toastmaster Rupinder Singh, to kindly take on the stage and end, uh, end with the closing remarks of the meeting. Thank you. Please unmute yourself, Rupinder Singh. Please. Yes, that is one consistent struggle that I have. But uh, thank you so much, Shepriya, for sharing your uh, sharing your feedback. And thank you, everyone, for being a part of this meeting. Guests, I would strongly urge, please don't go away. There is uh, uh, There are a couple of more items that we have to complete. First of all, I would reach out to the members. Is there anything where you think that you need help? Is there anywhere where you think that you need to appreciate someone? And is there anything? Is there any help that you can offer to a fellow professional speaker? Uh, do let them know. And the stage is open. Thank you. Uh, I have this one point that uh, in the tag team reports, since uh, in let's say in timer report, you were showing graphs of our uh, actual versus uh, the stipulated time. Similarly, if the reports can be more consistent, like uh, our counter can also provide a similar trend of uh, what is the minimum threshold which we expect and what was actual, something like that, consistent in all the three, so that it is not confusing in each of the report what exactly is displayed. Thank you, Ankur. Um, I am to blame for that because I had promised automated sheets about two weeks ago. And I have not been able to, I'm struggling with some algorithm somewhere, somewhere the code is failing. It's totally on me. I will make sure that we get a consistent sheets for everyone. So I'll definitely make it work. Thank you for sharing it. Uh, I actually was requesting feedback specifically with regards to the short, uh, short term goals. If anybody needed support there, or if anybody had anything to offer to anyone or say thanks, or maybe ask for help. Anyone? I would like to thank Toastmaster Mukesh and Toastmaster Roli for helping me define my new form short term goals, which you will very soon see, probably in the next meeting. Thank you, Devina. And I often say to Roli, what would I do without you? And she says, breathe or probably live a better life, something like that. But she makes our lives so much better. And Mukesh, well, he's the epitome of helping out. Uh, okay, anyone else? No? Yeah, okay. Uh, I have a bunch of people to thank. I would, of course, like to thank Roli. I think she's managing uh, not just her role, but also certain other roles within um, the professional speakers admirably. I'd like to thank my EC team. I would also like to thank uh, Sandeep, Toastmaster Sandeep Kumar, in that uh, he has uh, been, he has agreed to be a part of the EC as a floating associate vice president. So anyone and whosoever needs him can kind of tap into him. But thank you so much, Sandeep, for doing that. And did I see Parul 
form a frown on her face when she heard that. Uh, so, okay, no, I, I did not. Thank you. Uh, I will now turn it over to the guests and I will start by asking uh, DT, uh, distinguished Toastmaster Nagaraja Rao, how did you like the meeting, sir? And can we expect to see you in the in future meetings? I really like the meetings because uh, there's an uh, the members are held accountable for their uh, short term goals, uh, which I thought was uh, excellent. I have not seen this uh, anywhere else. So this is something uh, I think I should uh, recommend this to our club also. So I, I like this uh, very much and. Uh, uh, kind of more than one person giving evaluations. Uh, it's an evaluation panel that also is a very good practice. Uh, as G mentioned, uh, uh, if I hear somebody speaking, if they are video on, it's a very awkward thing. You know, in in my club, they are not allowed to speak with without the videos on. So this is something you can probably bring it as a practice. So that's that's my take, uh, feedback. Thank, thank you, you for, for inviting me. Thank you for sharing your uh, candid feedback, uh, distinguished Toastmaster Nagaraj Rao. Yes, uh, we are working on the role of uh, having a tech master. We are uh, we are working on that particular role, and that person will be responsible for muting, unmuting, probably minding the waiting room and everything. Feedback well taken. Thank you very much. Uh, let's move on to Margarita. Margarita, you were the grammarian today. I know that, but overall, as far as the meeting goes, how did you like it? Um, overall, I liked very much the evaluation panel because this is a format that I have seen it once in your club when I was there physically and I forgot it somehow and now I realize how much I appreciate it. It is actually a very nice thing that the speaker can call out the evaluators. It has also a super advantage everybody has to stay focused during the speeches. You can't get sloppy because you might be um, called to the stage. And this is resolving two issues, better feedback, more varied feedback, and at the same time, encouraging everybody to be there. Yes. I like in general very much how you have handled also the technical difficulties, which are understandable. And by the way, a host master will not resolve them. I can say that from experience. With regards to people being off, um, we have the rule in our club or in our clubs, because I'm in a couple of them, that people who stay for extended amounts of time Without video, we just kick them out. Oh. And we, we are open about it. You, know, you are just kicked out. And everybody from time to time has to go on a still picture because maybe a child is running into the room or whatever. But we are in our clubs not accepting being not on video because it's not polite also towards the speakers. <laughs> But that's Thank just a comment. You may choose to do it however you want. And maybe you are much nicer people and you will never dare doing such a thing. But well, uh, yeah. you know, if we do that thing in India, I think a lot of our Toastmasters meetings uh, would be empty. Uh, so, okay. yeah, it is a necessary evil. We have to live with it. But thank you so much for giving us that uh, idea. Uh, let me quickly move over to, over to Sajal. Sajal, how did you like this meeting? Um, thank you, uh, Rupinder sir. So, uh, attending a PS meeting always makes my Sundays. So, and I personally loved the theme, and it was uh, it was amazing to hear the speakers today. All the role players did a fabulous job. They were all very well prepared, and uh, I was actually uh, keeping my video off due to some bandwidth issues. So, I'm very sorry about that. So uh, thanks for having me here, for giving me the opportunity to uh, listen to all the speakers today. And that's it. Thank you, Sachal. Thank you for coming here. And uh, your feedback is always uh, solicited. Uh, solicited. You are always welcome in professional speakers. Uh, I would now like to ask Subhashri and then Spriha as to how did they like the meetings. Le meeting, sorry. Uh, hi, sir enjoyed the session it was very intriguing and very uh, uh, 
um, in committee also i got to learn a lot of thing about like just i'm going to start my uh, career so it was very useful for me mm-hmm. and the sp- uh, presentation thing and the way people delivered their speeches and the, uh, and also the impromptu speech uh, i tried for the first time i hope i did well anyway and for the video thing there there is some technical problem for which i could not turn on the video and i'm extremely sorry for that and overall it was a very good experience and thank you for letting me uh, you don't have to apologize for not turning on the video subhashi i think that is a miss on my part uh, when margarita said that margarita the other challenge is that we live uh, in a country where we have very finite bandwidth i mean even though they offer unlimited packages they offer limited bandwidth and there is only so much that our internet um, and that our routers can handle because as of now i know that there are five other people who are using my internet router so it becomes a challenge at times uh moving on to spriha um hi team rupinder i'll switch on my video this time um yeah so i really enjoyed being a part of the meeting one of the best part was uh, the number of uh, you know usually i have not attended a toastmaster meeting where you have a professional speaker then you have prepared speech and then you have a keynote speaker like this so it was a great take away for me and i also like the table topic session and i also found the evaluation was very nice to done i mean uh, sharing the excel files and the graphs that was totally new for me so yeah i really enjoyed being a part of this meeting thank you thank you so very much uh, spriha for sharing your feedback uh, we continue to strive towards setting new benchmarks in excellence and we look forward to having you in our meeting today so i would uh, request everyone to please uh, look us up on youtube and subscribe to our youtube channel i would also request everybody and that is guests to please uh, return to our meetings should you want to be a member our vp membership is anushit uh, raj mehta and the distinguished toastmaster raj mehta is also helping her out and you can always go to our floating we associate vp uh, sandeep kumar for any such queries thank you so much and i see margarita putting up that i don't have network since the 25th of june and work using my mobile phone as a hotspot ah well you know the mobile hotspot is a totally different story altogether margarita i don't even want to go there but uh, thank you everyone just for your information our next power talk speaker is our past district director and distinguished toast master uh, sandeep raturi and he'll be delivering a speech next week i look forward to listening to him as i'm sure all of you are so let's make sure that we meet again same time at the same place and as a tradition that was started by our past president mukesh thakur our next meeting starts no yesterday no, i'm changing it bye bye now 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 you saying no or are you saying now No the next meeting starts now I'm sorry.